That was a lot of really like super interesting high concept stuff. But I think now it is the time for some loud gay trash. Who is ready for some loud yeah. gay trash? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I adore you. Nathan, I'm going to introduce you real quick. Sure. And go ahead. Uh, then we'll have you just take it away. So, everyone, meet Nathan Blades. Nathan Blades is a tabletop RPG designer, actual play, pod, excuse me, actual play producer and voice actor who prides themselves on making loud gay trash, as you just said. Uh, they run the Talent Agency podcast, which is a mixed system cyberpunk romp about criminals in the entertainment industry and the Neoncaster Twitch channel, where they host regular one shots of games from indie designers and Arcanacore an urban fantasy teenage drama campaign. So basically you do everything. Um, <laughs> you're going to be talking to us today about um, acting in actual play shows. And I feel like sometimes actual play shows um, get the short end of the stick. Is that a saying? I don't know. Um, when it comes to audio drama. So please take it away. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, yes, I am indeed. Uh, I, I, uh, I, don't um, I don't have access to my webcam settings, so you're going to see my, my face fuzz in and out because I can't turn that off. Sorry. Um, yes, I am your androgynous Android game show host, Nathan Blades. Uh, thank you for tuning into my panel on applying theatre acting techniques into actual play. I would shill myself, but Sarah has already done that. So instead, I'm just going to go and share my screen. Yes, I do believe we can see that. Uh, for those who do not know in the chat, actual play is the process of recording uh, tabletop RPGs for the public. It's a pretty new and really exciting art form. And although there are already some people out there who are considered standouts in the medium, uh, I think finding new ways to grow and taking inspiration from other mediums is key. So uh, what are we going to cover in this panel today? If the transition will do it, there we go. Technology is wonderful. Uh, we're gonna be covering three main topics. There were more, but then I had to cut it to keep it under 20 minutes, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we're gonna be covering uh, about how actual play is a new and interesting kind of theater, uh, separate from uh, stage theater, separate from improv, separate from just rolling dice at home with the mics off. Uh, we're gonna be looking at some of the ideas we can take from stage theater that we can use in our play. Uh, oh, I didn't edit the slide. I had to cut it down from five to four, but we're covering four acting techniques. I can count. And then finally, we're gonna be talking about how to embody a character safely, because if we're going to be going heart and soul into these fictional people, uh, we have to know how we can get in and out of character without damaging ourselves or other people. But before I get into it, some disclaimers. I need to cover my butt from potential Twitter backlash and cancelling. Um, I have to tell you that I am not an expert. Uh, this is just a synthesis of years of my own personal experience and research. Uh, I don't have too much time to go deep into the uh, ethereal history of theatre acting, and also I'm not a theatre major. Uh, so if you do want to well actually and me about some of the facts that I'm pulling, please tell me on Twitter uh, and I will pretend to, to, to uh, read those and feedback on them. Um, yes, there are many, many ways to run and record uh, actual play. Uh, this is just my personal vibe. And there's so many ways of running RPGs in general. Uh, so uh, if you have your own particular way of uh, rolling the dice, do not let me tell you how to do this differently. So first, why stage theatre? Well, I think that all performance and all art is for an audience, but it varies depending on the medium. I like to think of it as something of a spectrum where on one end uh, we have uh, performing for the creators themselves. That would be rolling dice at home without your microphone. There's nobody else in the room but you as far as you know, but uh, that means that there isn't going to be an external audience kind of measuring your play, you're not making it for them. On the other end of the spectrum, you have the likes of stage theatre, where there's lots of different techniques going on to improve the experience for the audience watching it and not so much for the actors themselves. And while I think that actual play sits somewhere in the middle of those, uh, being able to employ uh, techniques that appeal to the audience as well, separately from appealing to your players, is, a, is an interesting idea that is worth taking on board. Uh, there are many different types of acting techniques, uh, of which I will be covering four, not five, I'm sorry. Um, when I was, uh, I've been talking to a handful of different uh, theatre actors who also enjoy rolling dice uh, in lead up to this, and when somebody told me about the variety of different acting techniques, I was like, oh my god, it's like a fighting game, it's like the Capcom versus SNK2 groove system, ugh, and then I realised that that is a reference that only really, like, three people can get, and those three people are probably not on this panel, so I'm going to do the 
uh, lowbrow thing and compare them to D&D classes because you all understand that. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we'll be going into these in more detail, uh, but if one of these sounds relatively interesting to you, please do go on your own uh, journey into finding more about these acting techniques, maybe even signing up for classes in them, and we can build our art performance styles together. The first up, classical acting, uh, which I like to compare to The Wizard because this is all about expertise, through study, doing the research to get the best performances out of the circumstances. Uh, this isn't even actually the most classical, classical style of acting. We're not going back to like 600 BCE in Greece, where you get the literal idea of donning masks and hyper-exaggerating movement. Uh, but this is the more modern understanding uh, coined by Konstantin Stanislavski, a Russian actor and theater director who revolutionized Western theater in the 1900s. And actually, the other acting techniques we're gonna be talking about today are going to be based on that method. Um, it is all about uh, going beyond just reading the words on your script. It is about understanding your character through any means necessary. So that is doing your own personal research into seeing how other things are performed. If it's a historical thing, maybe doing research in that particular period. It's about training your mind, voice, and body. A lot of people who are classically trained are also trained in dances, so they have a, a more finer, precise control. Over their, over their bodies to be able to physically act the character they're supposed to be. There's also a degree of emotional connection, being able to think of examples in your own life uh, that emotionally match what the characters are performing. But it also realizes that if you're trying to dig into your own personal trauma in a sad scene, you might be finding it hard to recite your lines if you're trying to, like, you know, not relapse into that trauma you experience. It's about not digging too deep into those things. Uh, if you're the kind of RPG player who likes to write those big pages of character backstory, then classical acting might be a good fit for you because you're already thinking about your character in hyper detail before you're even playing. Uh, moving on, method acting, which is actually an acting technique you've largely probably heard of already, even if you don't have any theatre background, uh, through the likes of Heath Ledger or Jared Leto. But that is more of a super exaggerated form than what we're talking about here. Uh, I'd like to compare method acting to the warlock. It's about making pacts within yourself, uh, searching within for some risky power. Uh, method acting is also described as inside out acting, changing yourself internally to express a character externally. In classical acting, we had connect, connecting your own emotions to theirs, but this is about um, it being able to experience a wider range of things within yourself uh, to be able to tie that to your character. So, so if, for example, your character wanted to swing a sword around, you might be doing some medieval uh, combat reenactment to actually gain that understanding and being able to reflect that. Uh, even as a GM, uh, method acting might be useful in terms of having a wider world experience, your descriptions of environment may well improve. However, uh, with method acting, because it's really about diving deep into yourself and connecting yourself really, really intimately with your characters, it takes a lot of practice and care to dive into those characters regularly and safely. Um, if you're the kind of person that likes to reflect your own knowledge and experiences in your characters, if you've done, if you're able to do something in real life and you really want your character to be able to do that too, that is definitely method acting. And something you should explore. Uh, moving on to Chekhov acting techniques. Uh, I like to compare this to the Bard. It's about embracing the stage, being aware of the meta, and being able to connect with others, uh, your fellow players. Um, so in method acting and classical acting, there's a lot of being able to connect yourself to the character and doing a lot of deep research. And Chekhov acting is screw that, we're going to find the character in the moment, in the circumstance. Uh, Chekhov acting is really aware of the fact that you are on a stage and uh, not going for an authentic experience and using stage magic figuratively or maybe even literally uh, to be able to heighten your performance. Uh, it's also about being able to exude a performance energy, uh, being able to give off the vibe of your character through your performance, and then also being able to pick up on that performance uh, from your fellow actors, which feels a little new age, but I'm sure all of you listening can think of an example example of a, a theatre acting troupe or even actual play uh, where the players uh, as people uh, harmonize with each other so well that it heightens their in-character performances as well. Uh, if you're the kind of person who doesn't write a backstory at all, P.S. that's me, I, I don't, I hate writing character backstories, it's super boring, um, or you just like scenes where you can just uh, not actually progress on the plot but just vibe and express your character and your links of your character with other people, then Chekhov acting is a good fit for you. 
Our last acting technique, unfortunately, is going to be Meisner acting, uh, which I like to compare to being the rogue. It's about ignoring the framework, ignoring the rules, and cutting straight to the chase. Uh, Meisner acting was actually kind of developed as a specific counterpoint to method. Uh, it finds the idea of getting inside your own head for a character sometimes at its worst self-serving. It is all about getting outside of your own head and being able to understand the material well, well enough that you don't need to focus on it anymore. You're focusing entirely on the other actors and reflecting on their behavior. In fact, a popular Meisner acting practice is to uh, sit across from a fellow actor and say a really generic phrase like, I think you're upset with me. And the way that you deliver that line uh, entirely based on the physicality and the delivery of that line. And because the line is so generic, you end up losing the words you're saying entirely and you're acting entirely on how they are performing. Obviously, in the world of tabletop RPGs, there is no script, you're improvising. So instead, this is actually something that you can really tie into game mechanics. Uh, all tabletop RPGs, because game is in that acronym, have some rules involved. And being able to just know those rules inside and out so you don't even need to think about them anymore and use all that brain power on being in the moment and in the character is an incredibly strong Meisner acting technique. Whew. Well, that is a uh, hyper dump of information all in one go. We're going to take a slight step back from that, and we're going to talk about how we can use these acting techniques safely and healthily. Uh, a number of you in the audience might have heard of bleed in the realm of tabletop RPGs. And if you don't know what that is, that is when you have big emotional moments in a game, and you take some of those emotional moments subconsciously out of the game and into your daily life. Or if you flip it on its head, an instance where you've had maybe a really rat day in real life you take some of that frustration subconsciously into your game and your character's behaving differently. Both of those things, uh, especially in terms of actual play, are not good at all. Uh, bringing negative feelings out of or into play is good for absolutely nobody in the long run. Uh, we, in terms of um, actual play, is a, is a production. Uh, it is, it is theatre. It is a show for other people to enjoy. And damaging your own psyche or the health and well-being of your fellow players because you're taking negative vibes into your out of is absolutely a no-go in the livelihood of your show. You will kill your show. Um, deep character connection can be really, really raw and affecting. Uh, and I, I love the types where people are using improv uh, outside of comedy and using it to do high drama uh, or even horror, but being able to take that and take the mask on and off and be able to move in and out of that character on command is such a useful and important skill. Uh, good acting and emotional care does come actually from everybody on the team. While the GM, as well as having an actor hat, also has a director and a producer hat, and so they're really in charge of making the show like run functionally, um, and actually tied into that, uh, there's a modern directing role of the intimacy director, uh, being a director who uh, runs scenes about uh, romance or emotional moments, and being able to uh, direct uh, actors who might not be ready to do those things. <clears throat> under which you can kind of guide them uh, through where they can perform those scenes without going into a certain uh, area where they're uncomfortable. Or on the flip side of things, they might be super, super willing to do those scenes, but they need the initial guiding uh, enabled to help them do that happily and healthily. And the GM needs to do that too. Absolutely. Uh, your other players are also responsible for emotional care. Uh, if you're going to be in charge of scenes where you are having high emotions, being able to check in on your fellow players after those scenes and outside of play is super important. Uh, it is entirely useless to be uh, a really believable garbage human of a character that's super entertaining to listen to, but emotionally poisonous for your fellow players. And of course, uh, yourself, you are also incredibly responsible for your own emotional well-being. Being able to practice putting on and taking off the mask on command is a really, really useful skill. Ooh. So, our three takeaways for today. Uh, researching other performing arts will broaden your horizons and improve your own skills. There are so many excellent actual plays out there, and I do recommend you listening to a wide variety and not just D&D &D ones to get a really good impression of what uh, tabletop RPGs recorded can be. You can learn a whole lot in terms of uh, different ways of producing your show, especially if you uh, switch between uh, running stuff on podcasting formats like we're talking about today and watching video formats as well and seeing the differences and how those are produced and taking those ideas is useful. But looking to other art mediums and being inspired by the wider range of artwork in the world will definitely improve your art way more than just following one or two actual play shows. Uh, healthy and immersive actual 
gameplay features input and care from absolutely everybody. I will stress that again, even though that was the previous slide. Uh, even as the GM, uh, making sure uh, that you are, uh, e let's see, uh, this is something I wanted to mention previously, uh, when you are about to do really emotional or complicated scenes, letting your players know in advance is not spoilers. That is in fact preparing them so when those scenes actually come around and they're not caught on the back foot and working out how to handle that emotionally, both in and out of character on mic, they are prepared to act their hearts out. So that kind of openness is super important. But at the end of the day, try to enjoy games that don't have the pressure of recorded performance. Um, the, even though I said earlier that bleed is actually kind of not super useful for actual play, when the microphone is off, there are plenty of ways that you can use bleed in an interesting way. Uh, many people use tabletop RPGs to explore uh, their gender and sexuality. And while that is an incredibly spicy and maybe dangerous thing to do on mic, uh, exploring that off mic is absolutely wonderful. And you can learn incredibly cool new things about yourself. Uh, I played many characters who were the, he, they in a row. And boy, howdy, did I learn things about myself. And I am still continuing to learn how to uh, turn off my producer director brain when rolling dice off mic. So we are still learning and growing. Whew. And that is pretty much everything. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you so much to the uh, list of uh, theater people and uh, tabletop dice people simultaneously that I spoke to in preparation for this. There were so many cool ideas that I'm going to have to use. I'm going to make like a think piece YouTube video. Let's get H bomber guy. Let's get philosophy tube in this mofo developer a thing like that, where I can talk about this in a longer form. Uh, thank you so much to the people of the Phantom Arts Entertainment crew. Uh, all the stuff that I produced would not be the same if it wasn't for you. And Thank you to Laurie Saffin, the best wizard and best boyfriend, uh, for being uh, patient while I, I scream about how difficult this was to make. Um, I've been told to not specifically shill the stuff that I make in terms of the RPGs and stuff, but if you want to find out more about me, uh, you can follow me on Phantom Arts Ent on Twitter, uh, and arzalingua.co.uk has a lot of the stuff that I am currently uh, making. Uh, you can also follow us at twitch.tv forward slash neoncaster. We actually have a new show coming out on Sunday, the next episode of Arcana Calls coming out then. We're done. How close is that to 20 minutes? <laughs> Burn that, through that. <laughs> that is perfect, and you, you are perfect. I am so... I learned all the things. I learned all the things right now, and I'm so grateful for <sighs> you. I have so many people in the comments saying, I feel seen. I have people saying, you're killing it with this knowledge. You're hitting all the important stuff and helping us translate this into a form that's useful, useful for actual play. Um, you're getting a ton of thank yous. So uh, uh, on behalf yes. of everyone, Nathan, thank you. You are No problem, no problem. So thank you. Uh, so Hoover is a bit of a nightmare, but I'll jump in and try yes. and do the chat and respond to all those bits and pieces. I don't know whether we have time for questions or not live, but I'm happy to. We don't, unfortunately. We're no problem at all. Keep I'm moving. Aware.